Welcome back everybody. Yeah, I started out grinding on these with the wire wheel and then uh, wasn't getting very far so I decided it was worth putting the time into getting the sandblaster out and set up so that I could do a pretty good initial cleaning to everything and get a little better idea what we're looking at for work. This side is about how I expected with that pulled bracket mount. This side I thought that this was a crack initially but after I cleaned it up and got a better view of uh, the back side, I realized that's actually a scar from a hacksaw blade. So somebody at one point in time used a hacksaw to cut one of the light bracket bolts and just dug into the side of the panel a bit. So that isn't going to be as difficult to repair as I had originally thought. And another very interesting detail I noticed with these once I got them clean, uh, these panels are entirely handmade. I I didn't know if they had punched these openings out or not because uh, the prior model ZB had very similar grill screens but were shorter. And this is a grill screen off of that much larger Minneapolis Moline UD that Senior and I scrapped out a few episodes back. And these are clearly punched out like from a, a machine with dies and stamps. And so what they did with this one is you can see there's some grinder overruns near each rounded opening end, all right? So to make these, they just drilled a hole on each end and then carefully removed the material from in between and joined both of the holes and turned it into like an open slot. They did this for every one of these. And you stand back and look at them, they did a pretty good job. So the person either was following a guide of some kind or had a very steady hand, but other, um, clues about the hand fitting nature of these one-off pieces. You see a lot of carefully oblonged holes, like up in both of the top corners here, both of the bottom, sorry, both of the bottom corners are oblonged, like at a 45 degree angle. There are also some other, I don't think they're center punch marks. Maybe they were, but, uh, or maybe they were from some sort of a clamping system, but there's a lot of kind of the one-off manufacturing uh, process details that are still intact on these these panels. And those are details that I would never try to cover over or hide because they just, they show the one-off prototyping process. Um, we also sandblasted the fan shroud and our spacer bar and center joining strip. So we are ready to start working and start straightening some of these out. We've got a lot of rippled uh, opening slats. We've got a lot of dents in places that have been caved in and actually pushed out just about any kind of damage that you can imagine. So let's get busy. Okay, everybody, tools of the trade. Most importantly, some heat. Uh, when we look at these, you know, we've got these divots that we have to take out, but these panels were never flat across the face. If you look at the top edges of them, you can see they had a little bit of an arc. Both of them are the same way because they have to follow that radiator top tank the way it's kind of rounded on the front. And all of the rest of the slats, as well as the bottom, followed suit. So that's a little bit of an X factor, but not horrible to deal with. Um, before we look at like straightening these wavy ones and everything else, we just kind of have to return a, a little bit of contour back to both panels. So that's what we'll do. Just some rough adjustments to start with.
Okay everybody, I want to show you something. Right here off the end of my finger, we've actually buckled inward with this edge of the panel because this slat was bent so bad, it, it really pulled on this edge and this piece right here was the first to give. It actually scrunched in. We throw the straight edge up uh, alongside of it. See that gap right there? Yeah, it's, uh, it's pulled in pretty far. So I'm going to try some strategic heating. See, we're, we're fighting actual like stretched metal at this point where it's gonna be really hard to get everything to lay back flat. But first, to try to uh, pull some distance back out of this really mangled slat, I'm going to uh, throw this extension in here. Pretty good match to that uh, rounded edge there. We can heat it in just the right spots and I've got a leveraging device I can I can try to pull that hopefully straighten some of that back out All right, now I need to try to shrink some metal. This slat right here is standing up taller than the rest. And when it got so dented and mangled, it actually stretched it out a little bit. So we need to try to shrink it back because right now it's just too high and I can't hammer it down. Otherwise it wants to like kink down too far. Or then if I try to bring it back, it, it springs back up too far again. So uh, you can shrink metal back uh, to an extent if that doesn't work I'll take the grinder and I'll cut a slit in it to remove some material and that can like relieve the stress and then I'll just go weld it back together flush it back out we'll try this sh uh, the shrink method first so what I'll do is heat it red hot and then hammer to either side of it and what that does it, it just kind of compresses all of the metal molecules back a little bit And it's not uncommon to see these really start to move and spring up because uh, when the uh, when the steel gets red and it starts to get elastic, all the stress, all the push is going to go to that one spot. Just want to get it thoroughly heated, kind of right through the problem area. Got my dolly in place back behind because this is very much a uh, strike while the iron is hot scenario. looking better already. Now we just try to work down where the light bracket pulled. This is pretty thick metal so the good part of it is it's hard to hurt it. The bad part of it is well you got to swing pretty hard to move it. <laughs> so it is a little bit easier to work than really thin uh, sheet metal though.
Okay. I'm calling that good. Satisfied with the grill panels. We will test the fit on those later. If my bionic eyeball is to be trusted, they should be pretty close. But as long as I'm in the sheet metal mode, we've got a few dings to work out of the fan shroud. So I'll do that right now. I think it's time to put it all together. All right, we've got two bolts at the back, one on the side, and once again, we've got right, correct, and proper Rockford bolts. That's right. Nothing beats having all the correct bolts. So we'll hand start everything for now. We don't tighten anything until we have started everything. So far, so good. Single bolt on the bottom at the front. That's good. Friction strip next. Interesting detail I want to show you. They cut most of the body of it away at the bottom because it has to go over the top of that ear where both of the lower bolts thread into. Prototype nature of the beast. And now we see if all of these pieces are going to work with one another. Started in the friction strip at the front. Okay. Now we look at bolts on the back first. See where we gotta go drop a little. It's a good thing they slotted these holes and made them so oversized <laughs> when they built this. That's part of working on uh, pre-production parts. None, nothing has been figured out. It's all subject to change, all hand-fitted. Nothing is streamlined like the, uh, the approved production pieces. There we go. Clean start. I can tell on final assembly we're going to need flat washers under these and of course lock washers too. But um, yeah, some of those slotted holes really stick out from under the head of the bolt. And now here's the spacer bar that we discussed earlier because this production ZB top tank was made to work in conjunction with everything else that was deeper this way. Quickest way to do it is just a heavy steel bar. Fill the void. It's a nice fit too.
And finally, our modified production ZB fan shroud. The main modification is this opening that they cut right there because in a ZB, this fan shroud was attached right against the back of the radiator top tank. But because we've got these deeper side panels and the spacer bar here, it brings this fan shroud to the rear just enough that they needed extra clearance where the upper radiator hose angles down just a bit. Otherwise, the top edge of the shroud would have been into that hose. Once again, correct Rockford bolts. <laughs> there won't be a single bolt on this whole assembly that isn't a Rockford by the time I'm through. Okay, everybody, this is a site that I have not seen since 2007 when we took this tractor all apart. It took us way too long to get back to this stage, but uh, I'm happy with it. Um, I'm really surprised we got these grill panels to lay back flat as well as they did. Uh, we didn't have to cut, grind, weld, any of that. We've returned the rounded kind of lower profile to these that they once had. They had been pretty well beat flat against that radiator base. We can reference that to our archive photo and yeah, same rounded profile down at the front. Uh, another prototype bit, the fan shroud sticks out wider than the radiator sides. Oh well, they were piecing it together, making it work. And another funny detail I noticed when I was putting these together. Um, so this side panel's flat above this lower radiator um, opening, but then you look at the top, we've got that relief cut into it. The panel on the other side, but that one's flat on top, and that has the relief on the bottom. I think they put that relief on the wrong corner. I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be above right here to give you some more room for that lower hose, but you know they made these panels the same so that they could be interchanged left to right, and they got that relief on the wrong corner, and I think they looked at it and said, well, we tried. <laughs> so. All right, we've built the box. We're one step closer to sending this off to have radiator core work done. We've got a lot more hardware left to go. Um, some other minor bits, pieces, thermostat, outlet cap, things like that. But for right now, I'm happy. I think that looks excellent. So I thank you everyone for watching. I hope to see you back again. And X231 starting to take shape. <laughs>